Originally released on May 18, 2021, Yula is getting her first ever rerun in Genshin Impact, and here is what you need to know before pulling for her banner. As a quick disclaimer, these type of videos are addressing character in a meta perspective and are not meant to stop you from pulling your favorite waifu character if you still desire to do so. In the current Genshin Impact patch, Yula is considered to be a meta character at a 3 out of 5 rating, which means she can perform really really well and have a very respectable amount of AOD damage as well as good nuking capability. However, she has some issues that make her fall short when compared to more meta DPS such as Ganyu, Hu Tao, Xiao, Ayaka, or maybe even some of the 4 star characters like Shang Ling. However, Yula can definitely clear the abyss with ease and can stack up with most of the content in the game, especially with enough investment. Namely, once you can one-shot the entire floor, Yula can perform extremely well or even better than some of the other characters currently listed on the list. And although Yula scale extremely hard with investment, the truth is these are typically not achievable without spending tons of money which commonly referred to as whaling. And therefore, while for whale type player, Yula may perform extremely well, please know that if you're not planning on whaling on Yula, your experience will vary a lot. Yula is commonly played as a hyper carry, with the primary goal being stacking her elemental burst and doing a very very big nuke damage to eliminate your enemy. But other than that, using Yula as a Beto driver, namely doing a Yula, Beto, Fischl, or even with a Raiden team is also a very top tier meta team composition that is very commonly ran as well. So you're not limited to playing Yula hyper carry in case that doesn't work out for you. While Yula have a very big nuke damage and is currently the highest damage nuke in the game so far, this could actually be seen as a negative issue since she needs to stack her elemental burst in order to get her nuke damage out and this is commonly referred to as backloaded damage problem. Backloaded damage have some common issues, for example, one, it could be very difficult to instantly utilize your nuke to kill very annoying enemy at the beginning of the fight, as your damage does not come out until a later part. For example, the Crow Sassin Mages. Furthermore, new Inazuma enemy have HP lock phases, which mean that you cannot damage them past a certain threshold. For example, the Mago Genki, the Hydro and the Pyro Hypothesis, or the Perpetual Mechanical Array. And these enemies have all been seen in Abyss so far. Doing one giant big nuke could potentially mean that you miss out on a lot of damage due to not being able to damage them past their HP threshold. And this is a prime example in the latest boss fight, La Sinora, where you are not allowed to exceed a certain amount of damage per hit. And so Yula is unable to utilize her elemental burst in that boss fight at all. One of the other problems with Yula at the current moment is that she cannot utilize amazing support like Bennett or Kaza or Venti to their full potential. Which means that as a team, she will fall short a little bit when compared to other top tier meta DPS. Because for example, top tier meta DPS like Ayaka can abuse Kaza really really well. And Yula cannot abuse Kaza as Vivi does not trend physical resistance and you are not able to swore physical damage, so you are unable to enjoy the full benefit of using a Kaza in your party. Depending on your account however, this might or might not be an issue, as Yula is not dependent on highly contested support meaning that you can simply use those support on the other party member in the other side of the abyss. For example, Yula does not desire Bennett as she cannot fully utilize Bennett well, therefore putting Bennett on your other side potentially with your Shanling together is going to be a great idea. In fact, this could be a good thing for your account if you're a new player and doesn't have many support available to you. But on the other hand, if you're a veteran player with a lot of amazing support, not being able to use those support might be a letdown. While Yula cannot utilize a Nemo character, you could bring Electro character to get physical shred. However, in general, Electro character is outclassed by Nemo characters. Although recently, we got a decently powerful Electro character, aka Raiden. So if you have Raiden, doing a Raiden Yula pairing could be a very beneficial thing for your account. However, do know that Yula Raiden have extended rotation and therefore is not a strict increase of Yula overall power level, especially when compared to just running existing electro support like Yula Fischl. It does however make running Yula significantly easier 
and overall are just a lot more friendly to casual players who are not as skills. So if you're a player with lesser skills, running Eula together with Raiden could be a something very beneficial for you. Currently, the most powerful team comp for Eula is actually ran together with Beidou. However, this is very very mechanical intensive in terms of rotation and energy funneling and very unfriendly to less skilled player. But if you have a Raiden, it will make this team comp significantly easier to run while being only a little bit worse than just running the Beidou official variation. Overall, if you have a Raiden in your account, rolling for Eula could be a beneficial thing as you can simply do a Eula Raiden pairing and then use a national team on the other side which previously might or might not be tied with your Raiden. But overall, the biggest issues with Eula by far is consistency. Namely, Eula have very very bad matchup that she doesn't do very well against and you have to do a lot of reset in order to get that one perfect run on Eula. For example, as seen in the current Abyss Troll 3, with the rune type enemy who have very very high physical resistance and very high mobility, Eula struggle a lot against these type of enemy. Eula struggle a lot against high mobility enemy, Shinsi is very dependent on hitting her entire elemental burst in clump, but she is unable to bring a Alimo CC grouper character like Kazuha with her. And this is especially true with the new Inosuma enemy that have a lot of mobility. For example, the Kaligi or the Nobushi like to jump and then move around, or the Rune Crusher like to teleport away when you're close. And some other enemy also have similar issues like the Maku Genki, the Spectre, or the newly released the Wolf. Since she is very dependent on hitting her elemental burst, as her elemental burst is contributing to 50% of her total damage, this means that if you do not hit every enemy with your elemental burst, usually you'll be losing out a lot of potential damage. What this also means at the same time is that if you do not critical strike on your entire elemental burst against every enemy, you will be losing a dramatic amount of damage, and both of these cases usually will result in a reset for your Eula. The fact that Eula is so inconsistent in these two aspects often results in a tons of reset in a Eula run, and therefore it is very difficult to run Eula on the second half of the Abyss because when you reset, you'll be resetting the entire chamber, not just the half. And this is a problem unique to Eula. Finally, just in case you're planning on rolling for more than one copy of Eula, aka for Dolphin player, Constellation 1 Eula can yield a decent amount of damage increase, however, the other Constellation outside of Constellation 6 is generally not worth it. Although Constellation 3 is a little bit nice as you increase your elemental burst level by 3. If you're planning on rolling for more than one copy of Eula, you should decide whether or not you're going to fully commit to C6 or not, as Constellation 6 makes Eula a very very powerful character with one of the highest damage ceiling in the game. But Constellation before that is just not very meaningful to spend your money on, aka either stop at Constellation 1 or go all the way to Constellation 6. In the end, Eula is a alright DPS character but just be aware of her existing issues. She can definitely clear the abyss fine and so you can definitely play her if you enjoy her. But if you're strictly looking for a more meta characters and you can afford to wait, waiting for something stronger like the Ganyu rerun or potentially a Shao rerun could be more beneficial. Or maybe you can even just roll on the current banner in the 2.2 patch which is Hu Tao. In the end, you'll just fall a little bit short when compared to top tier meta DPS, but if you don't mind that aspect, Eula is still a very very meta character that you can consider picking up for your account, especially if you do enjoy her playstyle or her looks.